Each year, there are thousands of calls for search and rescue in the state of Oregon alone. Oregon has the third highest of missing persons in the entire United States. Of those thousands of calls of search and rescue, 90% of the people are found alive and well. 8% are found deceased and 2% are never found at all. Today I'm going to tell you three stories of four missing people that happened right here in the state of Oregon. These are very cautionary tales because these people made certain mistakes they shouldn't have made. And as always, there is simply more detail to them than I can give in a six or seven minute YouTube video. So feel free to look up further information at the conclusion of the video. But before we get started, why don't you go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and lightly knock the dust off the subscribe button for more Oregon stories and adventures just like this one. Let's get to it. On October 14, 2016, Sean Higgins and his son Trevor went on a hunting trip 45 miles east of Gold Beach, Oregon. They brought along Trevor's uncle with them to help with the hunt. Sean, Trevor, and his uncle parked on a forest service road and went out into the woods to see if they could find animals. They all went different directions. They only planned on being gone for about an hour and then they would meet back up. However, Trevor showed back up at the truck at the designated meeting time and the uncle and Sean were nowhere to be found. They waited for about two hours and eventually Trevor's uncle came in and they met up, but they both continued to get worried because Sean was nowhere in sight. Trevor and his uncle took off in separate directions looking for where Sean had gone. They both had, they knew he went like this direction, but they didn't really know where, so one went this way and the other went that way. A couple hours go by, it begins to get nightfall, and the uncle shows back up at the truck waiting for Trevor or Sean to show up, but neither of them did. Curry County Sheriff's Department were notified that we now have two missing people in this forest. Sean and Trevor were both missing at this point. The following day at daylight, a search and rescue operation proceeded, but they didn't find anything for the first several days. On the fourth day of search and rescue operations, they found a makeshift shelter. Inside the shelter was Trevor. He was taken to a hospital and treated for hypothermia where he would make a full recovery. However, Sean Higgins was never found. No sign of him, no trace of him was found. Sean did have a backpack with emergency supplies, food, water, and a GPS. That GPS signal could have been used by searchers to track his locations throughout the forest. However, Sean left that backpack in his truck. He didn't bring it with him. He was only going to be gone for an hour, so he didn't see the point in bringing it with him. For Trevor's part, he did everything right. When he realized he was lost, he stopped, he set up a shelter, and remained in that shelter until searchers found him. Where Trevor went wrong was that him and his uncle separated to go search for Sean. They should have stayed together. They should have stayed as a group and gone off to look for him. If they didn't find him, they could come back and search and rescue could come out and do their thing. There are a lot of theories about what happened to Sean. First off, the first prominent theory is that he fell down a ravine. The Oregon coast is full of these ravines that searchers simply couldn't get to and they couldn't see him based on all the overgrowth that was going on in the area. There's a lot here in the Oregon Coast Mountains, which is where I'm at today. There is a lot of undergrowth and you just simply cannot see underneath it. The other theory is that he got attacked by a Sasquatch. Chances are great that he just fell and they weren't able to find him. We won't ever know what actually happened to Sean until his remains are found, if they are ever found. If you do have any information about Sean Higgins, please contact the Curry County Sheriff Department. There is a link and a phone number in the description of this video. In June of 2012, Jake Dutton went on a three-day backpacking trip in the French Pete drainage of the Three Sisters Wilderness. He stopped at the trailhead, he filled out a trail permit saying this is the date he's coming in and this is the day he's going to be leaving. That was the last sign anybody had had of Jake Dutton. Jake would not be reported missing for three weeks. Three weeks later, Jake was supposed to arrive in Vancouver, Washington and take his nephew out on another wilderness adventure. However, he didn't show up. This was very concerning for Jake's mother because she didn't really know where Jake was. Jake hadn't told anybody of his plan to go into the Three Sisters Wilderness. A search and rescue operation was started, but it was a little bit difficult to get going because nobody really knew where he was. In July, Jake's permit was found and the search began there. However, it was more than a month after he had already gone missing that the search and rescue operation had started. The search and rescue operation for Jake Dutton would only go for a several days before basically they had to give up. Another operation, a smaller scale operation, was done in August of 2012, but 
it had no outcome. Five years later, a hiker hiking along the trail near the French Peak drainage spotted some human remains on the side of the trail. It was about 100 yards off the trail, so quite a bit of ways off the trail. The remains would be recovered and they were positively identified as belonging to Jake Dutton. It is very likely Jake Dutton died of hypothermia. The temperatures in the Three Sisters Wilderness in the late spring to early summer months can be pretty extreme. It has been known for the temperatures to get so low in late June that it will actually snow even though summer is upon us. Jake Dutton's death was ruled accidental with the likely cause of death being hypothermia. Where Jake went wrong was not telling a single person where he was going. Had he have told somebody, anybody, where he was going, search could have happened in that area and it's very likely he would have been found much earlier on. Doesn't mean he would have survived the situation, but he definitely would have been found more than or sooner than five years later. On January 19, 2021, Adrian Smith was dropped off by a friend at the Drift Creek Trailhead. The Drift Creek Trailhead is only about a mile and a half long to the waterfall and it's a really beautiful hike. However, Adrian was not planning on spending the time there. He was going to come out into the woods and go camping for the night and the following day a friend would pick him up. The next day, the friend shows back up at the designated meeting location and Adrian Smith was not there. He waited around for a while in case Adrian was running late, but still, Adrian never showed up. Lincoln County Sheriff was notified and a search and rescue operation for Adrian Smith started. Two days into the search, a person who had seen Adrian Smith's picture in the newspaper called the police and said, Hey, I saw this guy walking on a Forest Service road on the day he went missing. And this is where I saw him. The search had narrowed to the area where this man had seen the guy walking down the street that he identified as Adrian Smith. Nothing was found for several days. On, June, on January 26, a campsite was found that it was positively identified as Adrian's campsite. There was a shelter, there was a sleeping bag, there was food and water. However, no Adrian. On January 26, the search for Adrian Smith was called off due to bad weather entering the area. At that point, his chances of survival were very slim. Three months later, in late March, some hunters setting up a trail camera noticed something at the bottom of a cliff. They used the binoculars and they positively identified it as human remains. They returned back to Lincoln City, notified the Sheriff's Department, and on March 30th, those remains were recovered and positively identified as Adrian Smith. What happened to Adrian Smith is actually kind of unknown. It's very likely he slipped down an embankment, went to the bottom of the hill, injured himself, and ended up either dying fairly quickly from his injuries or being succumbed by the elements. Where Adrian went wrong is much like the Jake Dutton story. Adrian didn't tell anybody really what his plan was other than going camping. In the winter months of Drift Creek area, this place is soaked. Well, we're actually in the Drift Creek area right now. It is May, and it's very, very wet out here right now. You can see the sunlight shining, but it is very, very wet. The Sean and Trevor Higgins story, the Jake Dutton story, and the Adrian Smith story all serve to remind us mm -hmm. how actually dangerous it is here in the wilderness. It can be a very dangerous place if you are not prepared or if you are ignoring safety guidelines. So I do not ever want to do a Storyteller Tuesday story about you, so please go out and be safe. But since you're here, knock the dust off that subscribe button, hit that like button, and join me for more Oregon stories and adventures just like this one. On October 14, 2016, Sean... This is so hard.